What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the brand new iPhone 15 Pro. Now there's actually a lot that's new with the iPhone this year. Some good stuff, and maybe some stuff that's a bit controversial. There's the whole USB-C thing, but if you skipped the last couple of new iPhones, I actually think the iPhone 15 Pro might just be the upgrade you've been waiting for. First things first though, let's go ahead and unbox this because there's something new inside that we have to talk about. Peeling off those familiar stickers and sliding off the lid, the first thing we get is the phone itself. This is the natural titanium finish and material that we'll definitely take a closer look at in just a second. Also inside, of course, the famous designed by Apple and California text stamped on the outside of a small packet of stuff. Just a tiny instruction booklet and single Apple sticker in there. And last but not least, arguably the most important new accessory included with an iPhone in recent years, a USB-C to USB-C cable. Yes, the iPhone is now USB-C, no longer lightning. And this is a super nice cable that Apple includes to sort of ease the pain of that transition. It's a thick braided nylon similar to the MacBook charging cables. And out of everything, the transition to USB-C is most definitely the biggest change to all the new iPhone 15s this year. So with all that stuff out of the way, here is the new titanium iPhone 15 Pro once again. And this is certainly titanium. The iPhone 15 Pro comes in four colors this year. This is the natural finish sort of the raw metal. You can also get it in blue, white, and black. And as far as the pricing, the regular sized iPhone 15 Pro starts at about a thousand bucks this year, same as last year, with 128, 256, 512 gigs, and one terabyte storage options. And by the way, there wasn't any drastic price increase with these phones like was rumored, so that's good at least. When you first power the phone on and go through setup, you're also going to come across a new menu that coincides with the new action button. Gone is the old silent ringer switch. Now this little button just above the volume switch can be customized to do a bunch of different things. And I'll go over all the details with that in just a moment. So from the front and really the back too, besides the color, the iPhone 15 Pro this year looks pretty much identical to last year's phone. It's the same basic size, design, and form factor, 6.1 inches, with the same size dynamic island notch at the top. People have said that the bezels on the iPhone 15 Pro are a little smaller, but I don't see much of a difference there. It's very much the same familiar iPhone we've had for a while. Around back, the iPhone's titanium build and finish is all new for this year. The back cover is the same frosted glass we've had, but the housing and frame, that sort of brushed metal look, is the titanium material. If you're unfamiliar, previous iPhone Pros were made of stainless steel. The regular iPhones are aluminum, but this iPhone 15 Pro is now constructed from, as Apple says, the same alloy that spacecraft use for missions to Mars. Obviously, you probably won't be launching your iPhone into outer space, but the titanium housing does make this a very lightweight phone. And it may not be as noticeable on the smaller 6.1 inch Pro, but I know the Pro Max definitely definitely feels a lot lighter in the hand. The other little tidbit about titanium you might have seen some rumblings about is that titanium can sometimes have an inconsistent finish. There might be smudges, lines, some discoloration, even on the natural raw titanium finish here, but especially on the colored titanium iPhone 15 Pros. The phone, I think, attracts far less fingerprints than the polished stainless steel Pros from last year, but just keep in mind, these Pro iPhones will look far from perfect as soon as you start manhandling them and may not have the flawless finish even out of the box. The only other minor design change actually is that the sharp edges of the iPhone have also been shaved down and rounded off just a bit. It's subtle, but in the hand the phone does feel a little more curvy and comfortable. Now, the two other major physical changes on the iPhone 15 Pro this year, of course, are the action button and USB-C. The action button is what was the silent ringer switch. It's no longer a switch, obviously. It is a tiny little button, sort of like the volume buttons there. And the idea with this is if you long press the action button, you can sort of do a myriad of things, depending on how you set it up. And you have to actually long press it, by the way. A quick press seems to do nothing other than remind you to long press it. You can set the action button's action when you first set up the phone or afterwards in settings. And there's currently nine different actions you can choose from. The default action is putting the phone in silent mode. You can also set the action button to toggle focus mode, launch the camera, the flashlight, the magnifier, start a voice memo, trigger a shortcut or accessibility feature, 
or weirdly enough, do nothing. And as you swipe through this ridiculously over-engineered menu, you can test out the action button as well. I think across the different actions, launching a specific shortcut is probably gonna be the most useful and customizable thing to do with this new button. But I'm interested to see what Apple and maybe third-party developers wind up doing with it with future iOS updates. Also, if your action isn't the silent mode toggle anymore, you'll get a new silent mode toggle in Control Center, so look out for that when you need it. The other big physical change, of course, is USB-C. Gone is the lightning port for charging and pairing accessories, all the iPhone 15s this year have pivoted to USB-C. And honestly, I think this is a great long overdue change. Most of Apple's other major products are USB-C already. And beyond that, this just allows for a sort of universal smartphone plug type. It makes things simple. You can use your friend's Samsung cable now. You can loan out your iPhone cable to someone else. Everyone has the same cable to charge up their phone. Sure, it'll be a bit of a transition for a while, but I'm super happy with a USB-C iPhone and I'm excited to have one universal plug type now. One thing Apple didn't really change on the iPhone 15 Pro this year is the display. We once again have an LTPO Super Retina XDR screen with HDR10 and Dolby Vision content support. And the max brightness remains 1000 nits for the user adjusted option and up to 2000 nits of peak auto brightness. It's also still the awkward 2556 by 1179 resolution, which is totally fine for a phone at this size. And honestly, I'm okay with the same screen as last year. It's a super smooth and responsive screen with 120 hertz pro motion. It's still way brighter than previous year's iPhones and it's even brighter than some Android devices still. And it's a very bold, vibrant, and colorful looking display for all kinds of content. I can't complain here, and I'm not really sure what Apple could have done differently if they did decide to change anything. Powering the new iPhone 15 Pros this year is of course a new super powerful processor, Apple's A17 Pro. We also get eight gigabytes of RAM this year instead of six, so naturally this is of course the most powerful iPhone ever. Now that's sort of tough to measure nowadays. I feel like the last couple of years the iPhone hasn't felt, at least to me, noticeably quicker, but the phone can cut through some of those super complex console quality games they demoed in their keynote, which is cool. If you're a big gamer on the iPhone, you'll definitely appreciate all that extra power, but I think for the average everyday social media scrolling, you probably won't be blown away by performance. You also get the all new iOS 17 features, of course, but if you have any iPhone from the last few years, you'll get that software update anyway. What's also sort of odd this year is the fact that Apple didn't really mention any better battery life for this new phone. It has just a tiny bit larger battery size, 3274 milliamps versus 3200 in the 14 Pro, but both the wired and wireless charging speeds are the same, even with that pivot to USB-C. And there's very little mention of better battery life or a longer lasting iPhone anywhere from Apple. What you will see though, under the battery settings now, is the ability to set an 80% charge limit to help reduce battery aging and better optimized charging. That's probably due to a lot of us, me included, complaining about the bad battery health from the iPhone 14s. And I'm interested to see if maybe Apple did some things there to at least improve the battery health as a whole. Finally, as with every iPhone the last couple of years, Apple is all in on improving the cameras. Hardware wise, this year actually there's no difference there. The iPhone 15 Pro has the same triple lens camera featuring a 48 megapixel main lens, 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and 12 megapixel ultra wide, but how you utilize these lenses is pretty different and the picture and videos you capture with them have been significantly improved. For starters, you now have the option to capture 24 and 48 megapixel photos, which is a change from the 12 megapixel option last year, and you can save them in the high efficiency image file format instead of just raw. The main camera lens can also be set specifically to 24 millimeter, 28 millimeter, and 35 millimeter focal lengths, which you can initiate by simply tapping on the 1X icon or holding and turning the zoom dial. And these different focal lengths, or essentially zoom levels can obviously give your images a different look even with the same subject or setting. One important thing to mention, the regular iPhone 15 Pro zoom capabilities here are topped out at 3x optical. The Pro Max has an even better 5x zoom lens, but 
pretty much everything else is the same between these two phones. Obviously, you'll notice the camera improvements most when you actually start snapping some pics. And I'll have plenty of camera tests coming to the channel here soon, but Apple says they've improved portrait pictures, low light, enhanced detail and color, all the usual buzzwords to emphasize their new camera improvements. So there you go, that's the new titanium iPhone 15 Pro and some of its new features and functions. It's not a massive upgrade over last year, but with a handful of new things, including USB-C, I do think this new iPhone 15 Pro might just be worthy of an upgrade. What do you guys think? Will you be getting the new iPhone 15 this year? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.